Hi, my name is Cynthia Sargent, and I'm the biology curriculum developer and trainer here at PASCO. And today I'd like to share with you our plant respiration and photosynthesis lab. It's a paper lab that is part of our latest edition of the Biology Through Inquiry Manual. And you can find details at the end of this video for how you can get it as a free download on our PASCO website. The lab is designed to help students review the overall process of photosynthesis and help them relate what they've learned about plant cell structure and the processes of photosynthesis and respiration to the global carbon cycle. It's a lab that is easy for students to set up and collect data in a relatively short period of time and is a good one giving very consistent results. Traditionally, labs might be done with Elidea putting LED in water with an indicator like bromthymol blue and waiting 24 hours to see results. The advantage of this lab is it helps students visualize what's happening directly to the carbon dioxide levels. They can see it in a matter of seconds to minutes. They don't have to wait a long time. And they can see on a graph display the actual change in carbon dioxide, helping them relate carbon dioxide directly to the processes of photosynthesis and respiration. The materials are very simple for the lab. We're going to use spinach that was just purchased at the grocery store, a carbon dioxide sensor and the sampling bottle that came along with it, some foil, and a lamp. So to get started, I already connected my carbon dioxide sensor to my computer via the SparkLink. I'll be using a computer for today's demonstration, but the lab could just as easily be done on the Spark Science learning system. Now that the calibration is complete, which I know from the light beginning to blink again, I'm going to remove the carbon dioxide sensor from my sampling bottle. I'm going to place one or two spinach leaves into the bottle. It just kind of depends on the size of your spinach leaves. I've gently blotted the leaves so that they're mostly dry and ideally we would have the spinach leaves lay flat. So I'm going to put spinach leaf just through the opening of the bottle and I'll go ahead and put a second one in. And I'll lay them flat just to get the maximum amount of surface area that can be exposed to the light. And take a square of aluminum foil, plug my sampling bottle with the spinach leaves inside with the carbon dioxide sensor. I'm going to place the sensor and the bottle flat on top of the piece of foil. So I'm now ready to begin data collection. I'm going to turn on the light and I'm going to let the light shine directly on the bottle with the spinach leaves inside for about 30 seconds. When we're ready to collect data, we're just going to hit the play button to begin data collection. Now you can see a few data points being collected near the axis of the graph there. We're going to want to scale the axes to be able to see the greatest view of our change in carbon dioxide concentration for the bottle. So I open up the graph tools and I'm going to choose the scale axis button. And as the data is collected, the scale of the y-axis will adjust to the new data points. You can also see in the upper right hand corner a display of the carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million. And you can see how that is changing as time goes on. For the purposes of our presentation today, I'm going to go ahead and stop data collection and move on to the second part of the lab. So now we're going to compare the change in carbon dioxide concentration due to the photosynthesis in the bright light to what occurs when the plant is in darkness. So the aluminum foil will just fold over the sampling bottle. 
so that the leaves will be in complete darkness. Now you'll notice that I'm going to leave the light on. This will be a controlled variable. The compact fluorescent light should not provide too much heat to the system, but we'll leave it on just to control for temperature between the two parts of the investigation. So now that I've got the bottle sealed in foil so that the leaves are now in complete darkness, I'll leave my lamp adjusted just as before. And I'm going to begin data collection again, just by clicking in the lower left side here. Again, you can see the data points being collected on the graph display, as well as the digit display changing as well. Once data collection is complete, we can use the graph tools to be able to analyze our data. Again, for the purposes of today's presentation, we'll stop data collection before the time period you would traditionally go for in this lab. Open up my graph tools by selecting the graph icon. And there are a few things that you can do here. You can use a statistics tool to get the minimum and the maximum. So if you want students to look at what the carbon dioxide was at the very beginning of data collection and at the very end of data collection and find the change in concentration that occurred during that time period, the minimum and the maximum is a good tool to use. You can also use the graph tools to find the rate of the change. Using this tool, we can do a linear fit. And you'll see the linear fit gives us the rate of carbon dioxide decrease. In this case, negative 66.8 parts per million per minute. So hopefully you've seen from this presentation that Providing a lab to your students that gives them direct evidence of what's happening during photosynthesis and respiration can be an easy lab to perform. And one of the reasons I like this lab is not only does it help them understand those chemical equations for respiration and photosynthesis and the idea of carbon dioxide as a reactant or product of those processes, but I also like that this lab lends itself to easy inquiry. Um, designed by the students. So they could use the initial setup and change one variable, such as the distance of the light to the bottle. They can also compare different kinds of light bulbs to one another. So there's many places that students can go um, in a way that's designed by themselves to test the effect of a variable on the rate of photosynthesis or cellular respiration. Thank you for watching our presentation today. Again, find information at the end of this video on how you can get the free downloadable paper lab. And remember to practice safe science.